Hey there, I'm Douglas from DraftBit, and in this video, we're diving into the Keyboard Aware Scroll View component. We're going to be looking at what it is, why it's useful, and how it's different from the regular keyboard avoiding view. The Keyboard Aware Scroll View is a component that solves a very common problem, ensuring your input fields remain visible when the keyboard appears. Unlike a regular scroll view, it automatically scrolls to the focused text input and adjusts its position to ensure a seamless experience for users. Let's say you're building a sign-up screen with multiple input fields and buttons. Without a keyboard away scroll view, the keyboard would block some of the inputs, forcing the users to manually scroll up and guess what they're typing. By wrapping all your components inside this component, the view intelligently scrolls up so that every field remains visible when the keyboard appears. So how is this different from the regular keyboard avoiding view? So while the keyboard avoiding view pushes the content up and makes it visible when the keyboard appears, it doesn't automatically scroll. And this can become a problem when there are multiple input fields or the screen content is very long. Like, you know, a very long form and you're trying to fill this form and you have to continuously be manually scrolling so that the keyboard matches the input field. So this does it automatically for you. On the other hand, this component automatically scrolls to the focused text input, provides more control like setting extra scroll height or offsets for fine tuning. So it's ideal for forms or screens with several inputs where scrolling is necessary. And now that we understand the keyboard away scroll view and why it's powerful, let's move on to adding it to the screen. So the first thing that we need to do, we need to go ahead to the component picker, click add, then we're going to search for keyboard. And we're going to pick the keyboard away scroll view. So how it works, any component that you add inside here is automatically going to get that functionality. And what I want to do inside here, I'm going to add some input fields. Okay, so I have a single input field and it's just saying enter value. I've given it some basic stylings. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate uh, this input to simulate a long form. So now I have some input fields. Then I went ahead to the device preview and then I picked an iOS device so that we can see this on an iOS device. Now notice we have a form and it has some input fields. We're trying to simulate a very long form we would use this component. And now notice what happens. So by default, it doesn't really automatically scroll as I'm about to show you. So let me try to uh, click this input field you will notice nothing happens. So what we need to do, we need to go to the config and then we need to enable automatic scroll. Now, if we go back and click, it's going to automatically scroll the form and then it's going to show us the input. So now that we've seen how the keyboard away scroll view works, let's dive into some of these configurations. And first we have the component name. So this allows you to rename the component in the component tree. By default, it's keyboard away scroll view, as you can see, but you can customize it to something like a form scroll to make it easier to identify. Then up next, we have view inside tab bar. So if your screen is inside a tab bar, so if you know uh, what a tab bar is, so it's basically just a menu that will be at the bottom of the screen. So if you open uh, YouTube or similar applications in your phone, you're going to see that the home button, uh, the settings, the profiles, uh, subscriptions, everything is going to be on a bottom tab. So here you're just telling it that if there's a bottom tab, I want you to add some extra height. Then enable automatic scroll. We've looked at this. Then up next, we have extra height. So this adds a little bit of extra space above the keyboard when the input is focused. So when we focus an input, uh, the space between the keyboard and the text input, uh, we can add some extra height if we want. So let's just exaggerate this so we can see it better. So now when I click an input, you're going to see the height has now been increased. Look at the height between the input that we focused and the keyboard, right? Then up next, we have extra scroll height. This property gives you additional control by adding more offset between the keyboard and the focused input. It helps adjust spacing based on the keyboard height or device. So these are almost similar, but they are different in how they work. So let's come again, let's add 500. Then let's go and focus on an input. And you see it adds more height. Then up next, we have opening time. This property lets you control the delay in milliseconds before scrolling begins. For example, by default, uh, it's 250 milliseconds. So you have to wait 250 milliseconds before 
scrolling starts to happen. So let's make it 2000 milliseconds, which will be two seconds to see how it works. And now notice when I click, it's not going to scroll right away. It's going to wait two seconds, then it's going to scroll. So now when I click one, two, then it scrolls. Then up next, we have enable on Android. So we're now on an Android device. So what happens is uh, the keyboard behave back can vary between iOS and Android. So you need to enable this uh, property for the keyboard away scroll view to work properly on Android devices. Keyboard away scroll view component works on Android devices, as you can see. So right now it's disabled, but I can still use it. But then there are some properties that don't work properly when you're on Android. For those properties to work properly, we need to enable, we need to enable this component on Android. So when we enable this component for Android, all the settings here are now going to work on Android devices. Then up next, we have show vertical scroll indicator. This option displays a scroll vertical indicator when the user scrolls vertically. It's enabled by default, but you can turn it off for a cleaner look. So now when I click this input, notice we have a scroll indicator on the right side. But then we can turn this off. Now when I click, we don't get any indicators. Then lastly, we have allow touch events. So by default, when a user taps on the button or another component, the keyboard dismisses. So if I click outside, the keyboard is supposed to dismiss. So if you want the keyboard to stay open, you have to set it to always. So if I come in here, then I set it to always. Then, then if I open the keyboard, then I click outside, the keyboard stays open. But then on never, when I click outside, the keyboard closes. Then up next, we have styles. The keyboard away scroll view also comes with basic styling options like padding, margin, border, background, typography. And you can customize these to match your app design. And that's it. By using the keyboard away scroll view, you can now provide a seamless experience for users, especially on screens with long forms or multiple input fields. It ensures that the input remains visible when the keyboard appears, making your app more user-friendly and intuitive. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like, subscribe for more tutorials, and I'll see you in the next video.